Hey everybody, Evan Praskin here with Stoke Ventures Fly Fishing. I'm hanging out at Lost Coast Outfitters and we are gonna tie the trench bomb. Surf perch pattern developed that actually catches lots of striped bass. So we're gonna jump right in and starting off with Umqua 506 heavy hooks. I like size twos, you can use size ones, you can go as far as one aughts too, but two kind of covers everything. The reason I like these heavier style hooks is because a lot of the time I end up hooking striped bass while fishing this pattern for perch. Um, and the last thing you want is for your hooks to bend out when you hook a nice fish. So it doesn't hurt to beef up those hooks in the salt. For the thread, I use a size 140, whatever your favorite brand is, this one's UTC. And let's dig in. First, let's start a base with some wraps. And something that I've learned from Adachi was the length of the dumbbell vac. Just gives you a nice guesstimate of the area to tie in your medium dumbbell eyes. Um, I sometimes go as big as large, but most of the time I'm keeping it a little bit on the lighter side, medium or a small, just because we're using heavy heads most of the time that do a good job of pulling it down. But a lot of the time, I want this to dig deep and get into that trench and stay there, just like those crabs are mostly doing. So a couple of wraps here to secure it. The nice thing about this pattern is it is on the simple side. Um, we don't have a lot of materials, but enough to give it those profiles that um, these fish kind of look for. Um, it's almost like a clouser crab combo um, is what I've heard people describe it as. So after you get a couple wraps on that dumbbell, go ahead and use some super glue of some sort and add a little bit of that because the salt water beats up these flies. So if you put a little extra effort into it during the tying stage, it'll last you a little longer. So now, while we let that dry for a sec, here's the time we're gonna put in our tail. So we're using just your small size flash of oo. We're gonna pinch off, let's call it about 10 strands. Might be a little more, but with this pattern it is okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna start with the tail and I'm gonna let it go out past probably about the hook shank length. Um, you can always trim this down later, but I like to start with it a little longer because I want it to stick out of the back, especially when I'm done tying, so. It's okay if that catches on the glue because we're not gonna leave it there very long. A couple wraps here to secure it. And work it on back. Usually do a few before I come back forward. And then I'm gonna fold that puppy over and wrap it all the way back down. Pinch it all together, all the way back to about there. Bring it back forward. You'll notice I kind of probably over wrap my flies because I just like everything to be secured and not come up twisted and turned. Though it still happens, it's fine. All right, so trim that off even with the other piece of flash and there you go. So that's kind of our base for this fly. Now, at this point, what I like to do is add some legs to the back. This is the grizzly legs. Um, you can use blacks, oranges, reds. Um, I don't think it really matters, but we're just giving it a little bit of action and wiggle action to look like some legs. So first start off by cutting off a piece. 
doesn't need to be too long, but we'll start with something like this. And usually I'm making it about a nail's length. And what I will do is pinch it over. I'm gonna tie in, work our thread to the back. I'm going to secure it with one. I'm gonna go backwards, about even with that flash. What I'm gonna do is kind of force the legs down on either side and work back up to secure it off. Now don't worry about how pretty it looks, we're gonna wrap over all this stuff later. All right. So now what I'll do is hold the legs up and cut them off even in the back, just like that. All right, next, now that all this glue is dried, we're gonna use Chenille. So, on Sam Crab patterns, most of the time they have a little egg sack of orange in the front. So what I do is I split up the chenille to two different colors, orange and white. So cut off a little piece of this. And I'm gonna work my thread back about halfway back to the end because I'm gonna add the orange up front. So, catch it there, wrap it all the way back tight, and bring it back towards the front there. So, now, we go ahead and wrap forward as close together as you can, because then you'll notice it just starts kind of stacking on itself and giving us that center prof body profile that we're looking for. So right about there usually. Leave a little bit of space for that orange chenille to get tied in. All right, a couple wraps there. Back up and trim it off. Okay, so now usually what I do is kind of hold the little frill back to trap everything and make another starting point for the orange chenille. One thing I like about this pattern is I've tied it with lots of different material. So none of this material is exact. You can kind of go through your box and find stuff that works. Um, I've tied it with numerous different colors and uh, the fish all seem to like it. I think it's a little bit more about the profile than exact color of this guy. All right, so I'm gonna secure it all like that. And this one really only takes one or two wraps of the orange, because we're just looking for that little bit of egg look on the front. So just like that, forward with a couple wraps to secure it, and a couple behind it here. Trim it off. Now I kind of grab with my fingers and pull back all this extra just to give it a little bit of a clean front and wrap it a couple extra times down so it stays tight. All right, so there we have the inside of our body for this fly pattern. Now, sometimes I add other rubber legs here, sometimes I add them in the front right now at this point, but lately I've kind of just left it with these back two. I feel like is enough to give it that look that I'm looking for. Um, but if you want to get leggy, Go ahead and you can add a couple more legs on either side at this point. But I've been liking the look of this one right now. So work our thread up to the front. Now what I do before I do the clouser part of this fly is I kind of build up right close to the front of the dumbbells. And that kind of gives it a little taper so when I lay on my SF blend, it seats down a little, a little nicer there. All right, so for the under part of this fly, I'm gonna use a white. You can use tan, um, but something on the lighter side. Usually white is what I go to of SF Blend. So you don't need a whole lot. Maybe something like this. You know, a pretty thin pinch of it. like that, and what we're gonna do is double it over. Let's 
So I'm gonna hold it up to the fly and try to get that length down. So we're gonna go to right about where those rubber legs end. Something right about here. So pinch it in place. Secure it down. Back towards the dumbbell. And then bring it back forward. At this point, we're gonna fold it back down and trap. Come on back. So here's the part where I do the clouser trap. So I'll go back behind the dumbbells, a couple wraps to secure it back there so it lays down nice when you fish it, and back towards the front. Now you can get picky about cleaning the wraps up and all that, but I'm gonna seal it later with UV Flow from Loon, and uh, it's just gonna kinda coat everything there, so it's not too crucial to have it perfectly clean. It just depends who you are. And I cut it straight even with this. I don't really need to taper it. Um, when it's in the water holding that profile, it just looks like the crab ball, kinda like that. So now we're gonna rotate over now we're gonna do the top side. So the top side, I use a gray SF blend. Again, whatever you have at home, I've done white over white, tan over white. Um, it's not too crucial, but my favorite look is just the gray over white because it really does look like those crabs. So we're gonna cut the same amount of material off here. And usually when I cut, I'm cutting about, what, five inches or so, four inches maybe. Yeah. Who makes it? No, not Fish It's Pro's first picture off And we're going to roll it over as well. So, about the same length here as the legs. Hold it up so you can see about there. Now a couple wraps on this side to secure it. Now at this point, I can kind of reposition it a little bit. So when I cross it over, it's gonna come even with the other side. So what I'm gonna do is when I fold over this front part of SF, I'm gonna fold it on the other side so it covers the whole top of the fly. So what I will do is bring my thread forward to match the other one. And now I'm going to hold it over and we are going to trap it on the other side. At this point, when I tie it in, I kind of pinch it together just so it gives a good coverage of the top here. And at that point, I can kind of let go, hold it down and work it back. All right, so at this point, we'll whip finish this baby. And now I kind of do a little profile look. So this obviously needs to trim off on this side, that last folded over part. So let's give that a haircut. And at this point, the fly is done. So there you have it. The trench bomb. As you can see, it gives it a nice profile, especially when it gets wet. It turns into this little tight ball of a crab, kind of like that. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this tying session. Come on into the shop, take a look, be safe.